Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 45 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, Season 5. Alright, I am running a blaze rod farm, which is making lots of noise and being annoying. Uh, I also should probably... I don't know. I've, uh... I don't think I... Yeah, look at all the experience pulling down there. I want to show you why. Because I did not set up a startup program on this guy. Like, I never actually wrote any programs on him, as a matter of fact. Uh, so let's just do this real quick to collect m peripheral.wrap, right? Let's see how many levels he currently has. And how many were laying on the floor there? Wow, it collected a lot of experience, didn't it? It got about, oh, I don't know, five levels worth. And at that high, it's pretty good. So uh, we definitely want to turn the auto collect back on with a true command right here. Eh, something like that. I'll figure it out. Oh, right. I need a capital C and auto-collect. That's probably what it is. But anyway, instead of doing this... Yeah, see, I forget. I have to look it up. Uh, instead of doing that, we're going to want to set up this turtle to on startup automatically collect. This way, whenever, like, the server goes down, because usually what I do, because, like I said, I'm, I'm running this on a server now, on one of the uh, Creeper host servers, what I want to do is I usually go and shut down the server when I log off and stop recording. That way, the world kind of stays as it is between episodes. Like, I don't like too much stuff to happen between episodes. So uh, I'll usually shut down the server and then bring it back up right before I'm about to record. Well, that means this guy needs to uh, automatically turn on like he was, uh, you know, with my other turtles. So I definitely need to write some kind of startup program so that he's automatically collecting experience, which should be pretty easy. Then what I also want that program to do uh, is to check to see what his current experience is if it's you know at level 30 let's say or greater it's probably a good idea to check level 30 or greater and I'll probably check every few seconds I want him to uh, grab one of these books just one and uh, enchant it and then throw it right back in here and as we know this ender chest is linked over to this one which is now doing a pretty nice job of keeping this room organized so look at this we've got all kinds of enchants in here I have not gone through and started labeling what they are probably should might not be a terribly bad idea um but yeah we'll figure it out so for now i think what i want to do is probably get that program written then i'm going to go through and start labeling some of these things that'll probably be a little bit boring so i'll probably cut out most of that um part of the build but then once we've got pretty much everything running perfectly automated then i'll be kind of happy to like you know stop working on this for a bit and move on to something else one thing i definitely need to start doing is automating some of the seed oil production so that shouldn't be too hard it should just be a little bit of work to get the walnut nuts uh, automatically pumped out of here and sent somehow over to this room probably going to use a tesseract don't think i really need an ender chest yeah ender chest doesn't seem really necessary tesseract i think would be ideal uh just pop it down right on top of the squeezer there and then probably something to do with mulch we'll probably want to get rid of that guy and uh do something with it what i don't know we'll find something to do with mulch and then what else do we have well I want to get, and I'm probably not going to get to this this episode, but I do want to mention it. I'm getting low on resources again, and I've uh, come up with a new style of, um, you know, quarry. Uh, it's going to be kind of fun. It's going to be an interesting and neat build. It's going to inquire a lot of different things. We're probably not going to get to it this episode, but since I'm so low on resources, I should probably focus on it pretty soon. So that'll come up very quickly. And then uh, after that, well, we've got lots of other stuff to work on. But let's focus on what we need to for today's episode and that's this guy. Now you guys know I don't like to write code on camera too much. That's usually kind of boring for you guys. So what I'm gonna do like I usually do is write the code a bit off camera, come back and explain how it works and then paste spin it for you so you can use it in your own worlds. And then uh, going forward with that, we'll start working on some other stuff. All right guys, I'll be back in just a few after I've done a little bit of work in this guy's code interface. All right, guys, so, so far I've got a pretty basic program here. Um, it's going to wrap the peripheral. It's up here, actually. Um, and what it does right now is it's got a function called enchant book. Real simple, right? Uh, ignore this while true. I've commented that out. Um, select wherever, select slot one. Suck out, which uh, suck always pulls a full stack. So it's going to pull a full stack of books. So I'm going to leave like 31 in there. That's, uh, well, 57. Perfect. Why not? Grabs the first stack, right? Um, and then what it should do is uh, it should do turtle.drop, uh, whatever is the current item count minus one. So if it pulls out 57, it'll do 57 minus one is 56. 
and put those 56 back, always leaving one in the inventory. And then it's going to enchant it at level 30, and then drop that item back in the inventory, okay? So that's what's gonna happen. So when I run this program, it should print out how many levels the turtle uh, currently has, and then enchant the book. Sound like a plan? Let's do it. And I call the program books. Boom. There we go. And it, uh, it did it. And it was so fast that you barely even noticed. If you blinked, you missed it. But hey, look, there's the book going through the thing. So I don't even know what that was. I don't know if, I don't think I can programmatically look and determine, um, you know, what the item is in the turtle. I don't think it has any way to read that and figure out which of the enchants it is. That would be nice if I could print it out to the console, but no big deal. So now uh, that I know that that works, I'm going to uh, clear out this debug code here and actually show you the actual code that I wrote for the full program. Uh, real simple, while true do. Nice and easy, right? It's just gonna constantly run. That's just one of those always running programs. And it's going to uh, check the current levels and print it out with a nice little fancy formatting of currently level and then boom prints out current level okay if current level is greater than or equal to 30 so what that's going to say is if it's you know 30 or higher go ahead and enchant the book and then you're done if it's not greater than or equal to 30 sleep for about 10 seconds and then it's going to try again so it's going to keep running over and over uh the reason i'd put the sleep 10 inside the else here instead of outside is that you know if this thing happens to be like level 100 i want it to like three times in a row really quickly enchant the books it'll burn through all its enchanted levels and then it'll go ahead and just you know continue to wait to get more so let's go ahead and save this and run books now tell me if this works currently level 24 all right well it's not going to work because it's waiting so it should wait about like i said 10 seconds and then uh it should check again to say you know hey where am i at still 24 so let's do this turn this guy on and you know me Sound off. How's that sound? Even better, okay? So let's watch for this thing to get, you know, its experience and whatnot. We can see the, uh, you know, experience getting sucked up, all kinds of good stuff happening. And we should start to see this number climb a little bit. And then as soon as it hits level 30, we should get a book enchant. Now, the reason I'm enchanting at the moment it hits 30, of course, is that, um, you know, um, Minecraft has like one of those curves of uh, experience gain. So the higher in levels you get, the more expensive they get. So if you wait till level 60, it costs a lot more experience to go from level uh, 60 to 61 one instead of from like level one to two for example so if we burn our enchants right away it's more efficient so go ahead and you know do that trust me so i just want to check here to make sure that this thing actually works and does like you know as intended once it hits level 30 it should instantly enchant a book and it looks like we're almost there and we can kind of leave this thing running all the time um there we go boom it just ran and look it's currently level one how cool is that and if we go over here uh and i'm gonna go ahead and turn sounds back on because i do like hearing noise uh we should see a book there it is flowing through the system so we've completely automated the creation of enchanted books how cool I love it, right? So, uh, you know, we just let this blaze farm run all the time. The turtle will continuously collect things. And then, uh, you know, every time he gets about level 30, he's going to go ahead and spit out a book, which should make its way through the system somewhere. Um, I don't know if I want to organize this room just yet, or if I want to, you know, wait a little bit to organize it. Like, I'm sure I could totally use some enchants and stuff, but... At this point, I don't think I'm, like, really hurting to do it. Like, you can see my sword is uh, pretty much about to die. So I might want to enchant a new sword. Sharpness 3 is a little boring. Uh, what my goal has kind of been with enchanting is, like, try and enchant the sword myself. Uh, see if I get, like, a good set of enchants randomly and then just add one or two. But, you know, I can always do something a little different here. And we still have over here this guy to run if I want to manually soak up some experience. I can just let the uh, skeleton farm run, manually soak up some experience there, and that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do real quick, and there you go, uh, I'm going to uh, end the program here and paste bin put books. So there you go. Now you have the paste bin code. Awesome. Uh, you can go download it. I'm going to run books again. You can see it's currently level 22 and just waiting. So uh, yeah awesome right so now you know free access to get your books and you know play with that program you know i'm sure it could be improved it's a very basic program it you know only handles the most simple of tasks but it does exactly what i want it to do so i can't really argue too much with that so uh now let's get these sounds back because it's already bothering me that i didn't hear that door open and i will be back in just a few minutes when i'm ready to work on something new all right, guys, so of course we want to transfer items from one part of the world to another, so what better way to do that than with a Tesseract? 
Uh, let's go ahead and make some item tesseracts, because those are right up the alley of this. And I went ahead and made an autarkic gate off camera real quick. And this should be a very simple build. Um, really almost not even worth showing on camera. But still, gonna do it anyway. So uh, I want to automatically harvest uh, the walnuts, which you can see I'm doing. And uh, wow, these things are producing very quickly. I like that because we need lots of seed oil. So lots of walnuts is a good thing. Uh, gonna go ahead and hook up uh, this guy right here with the Tesseract right next to it. Uh, I'm pretty sure this machine needs items to be pumped out of it. I don't think it will automatically eject into like gold pipes. If it does, it makes this even easier because we don't need the gate, but you know, we can test it real quick if we want. Uh, just need ourselves a gold gate. So sneaking through the wall here. Can you guys tell I just love the portable hole? Any excuse I can use to use it is uh, pretty much gonna guarantee it to happen. So uh, yeah, let's see. I don't think the multi-blocks auto eject, but we're about to find out. Let's see. Uh, placing a wooden, a stone pipe here will tell us because if it does, then it's even easier, right? So 43 walnuts, no automatic ejecting. You actually have to apply uh, in either a redstone uh, engine or the autarkic gates here, which also are one of my favorite items and use a lot. So there we go. Uh, just now I need my wrench to get it back where it belongs. All right, and what I'm gonna do here is just do one of these old, um, Let's see, items and inventory is probably going to hold true because there's fertilizer and maybe the circuit board there, but I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and set energy pulser to on. Uh, actually, no wait, we don't want that on yet because it's gonna start spinning out on the ground. Fail, direwolf. Can't put you back in. Oh yeah, I can, okay, cool. So let's go uh, actually give this an output because what happens is uh, if the uh, energy tesseracts have, or the item tesseracts have nowhere to send their stuff, uh, they're not going to uh, behave too well, are they? No. So let's put down, oh, you know what? I have a chest right here. How awesome is that? That's perfect. All right, so uh, I want to call this, this was uh, frequency one. So let's call frequency two walnuts. Check and receive. That should be good. Probably gonna go to a wooden gate there and start pumping all the mulch into that chest nearby. That's probably perfect. All right, so let's try this again. Now that I'm actually paying attention to what I'm doing. Walnuts, send only, check. There we go. So that should behave and it should transfer these guys straight over to here. Walnuts. Receiving. Walnuts. Why you not work? Did I forget to hit a button? I did something wrong. Walnuts. Sending. It's actually really weird. Let me see if I can figure out why that would be. Now that seems to be behaving better. You know what it was? I think the squeezer did not like accepting things from the top. I think it wanted to accept from the sides. So if we come over here now, we should, ah, there we go, walnuts. Excellent. All right, let's real quick get a wooden gate and an autarkic here to uh, pull out the mulch because if that mulch slot fills up, it's going to stop processing walnuts, which would be bad. So you can see here I keep a good decent stock of uh, gates and stuff ready to go. We're just gonna need another one of these wooden and in the time it took to do that, I should have mostly gotten this completed. There it goes, yeah, almost done. So I just want to take care of all that mulch that would otherwise be a nuisance. Right to there. Now these guys should be intelligent enough to pull out just the mulch. See, yeah. See, uh, forestry machines are typically smart enough to know, like, you know, which items are supposed to go in and out, which slots. So it's not going to frequently pull items out of this slot, um, 
you, there might be a way to trick it, but I doubt it. Like basically if you're pulling out, it's going to pull out of this slot. And if you're, you know, putting in, it's going to put into this slot. And then there's also, of course, um, you know, the items that can go here and those are just, you know, cool and unique and good stuff. So pretty pleased. Now I've got a mulch chest. I can go put these saplings actually, um, you know, in the barrel over here because my diligent little golem is still doing his job. Golems are so cool. They just do exactly what they're told and they just keep on doing it. They're awesome. All right, so we've got an automated experience farm. We've got automated book enchanting, and we've automated our walnuts and uh, turning them into seed oil. Uh, I think now might be a good time to work a little bit on some bees. I want to um, finish up this episode looking at some of the extra bee machines. There's one thing I wanted to do. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, all right, here's here's what I'm going to lay out the episode for these guys. I'm going to say, you know, taught them bees already. Now I want to show them alviaries because alviaries are awesome. Awesome. and they're part of uh, you know forestry by itself and then I'm not gonna have to worry about doing extra bees stuff until I've already covered most of the forestry vanilla bees quote-unquote vanilla bees uh, but then I looked at my honey supply and realized that I don't have enough honey to make an alviary I have most of the other materials so I've been doing pretty good now of course I've been using a lot of honey to uh, analyze my bees and turn them into liquid DNA so that could be a good you know portion of where the honey has gone but uh, for now uh, I, I've got plenty of beeswax I think I have enough pollen and I'm pretty sure I definitely have enough oil jelly could probably use a little bit more pollen so maybe we want to ramp up production of uh, some of these materials and in order to do that I'm going to start looking at some of the extra extra bee machines. So there's quite a few of them actually. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at the extra bee machines, let me go find them in NEI here. Uh, we're going to look for this guy, which is the gene pool. A good way to look for things typically in the FTB mod packs, most block IDs stay next to each other. So like, you know, the block IDs from one machine stay with all the other ones. So we look up a machine that we know is from there. So block ID 964, for example. Then we just, uh, you know, jump over to 964. These numbers are all in order. So we can skip past all the red power to micro blocks and stuff like that. And we should be getting pretty close to 964, which should be coming right up. There we are. Cool. So we can see all the different bee machines. Now, there's a lot of them here, and I'm probably going to make all of them. Uh, don't necessarily need... I think the replicator is the only one I don't need. Yep, replicator is really the only one I don't need, but I'm going to make it anyway just to show you guys what it's about, and who knows, I might use it at some point down the line. Now, we've already seen the acclimatizer in the APRS data bank and the indexer, so we're like pretty well covered on most of that stuff. Uh, the indexer over here is what's storing a lot of uh, the extra bees that I'll probably just wind up getting rid of anyway. Uh, we've seen the genetic, um, the gene pool, that's this guy. Now, there's also the, the genetic machine and the sequencer and the splicer. Uh, genetic machine, of course, being like the component that's made that makes all those other guys right uh but we're gonna want to make three four five six right so i'm gonna need uh an isolator a replicator we're gonna need at least five of these uh advanced genetic machines uh we're not going to use the um sequencer or the splicer those are tech two and they have their own purposes but i'm gonna jump straight up to tech three um of course it's a little bit more resource and power intensive but I think we're at the point where we can kind of do it. Um, speaking of power, I did say one of my goals here was to automate the transfer of laser rods. So I should set that up either before we wrap up this episode or not. But I do want to work on these extra B machines too. How are we doing over here, steam boiler? Not well. Totally out of power. So we're only producing about two-thirds of what we could produce. We're, uh, like I said, generating about one... Uh, high pressure boiler worth instead of you know one and a half maybe at some point i'll go turn them both into liquid boilers maybe even two high pressure liquid boilers but anyway i uh better start working on my b stuff so how about i start getting some of the advanced machines together it's a little bit of a long complicated processing chain so i'm going to craft them off camera and then come back to show you how they work and how to use them all right be right there so I just wanted to show you guys making the uh, carpenter to get myself the basic circuits, the APRS machine, which you've seen me craft in the past, and then a bunch of iron. So these are pretty expensive machines, and this is just the Tech 2 one. I have to get up to Tech 3 next, uh, which is going to be the advanced genetic machine, which requires a diamond. Do I even have five diamonds? I have exactly five diamonds. Oh boy, really got to do that mining build. 
probably going to be next episode. All right, and with that, I can really quickly put together the genetic machine for you. So like I said, a little bit of a complex crafting setup, but really not too bad. Now, with those, we're going to have to get some really complex stuff. Uh, let's take a look at what we need. So one of the machines we need is the isolator, which is going to require some emeralds and some blaze rods. Not too big a deal. Um, the replicator I'm going to hold off on. Like I said, I might not really need that. But uh, the purifier we're definitely going to need. That's going to require three gas tiers. I don't even know if I have that. Uh, the inoculator, some magma cream. That's not going to be a big deal. And the synthesizer, which will require some soul sand. Also not a big deal. So what do I need in the end? Uh, I'm probably going to need... Uh, at the very least, three gassed tears and three emeralds. Do I have three emeralds? Nope, just one. But I know where to get some. Uh, gas tears, I have two of. So I'm close. Uh, maybe I need to go visit the nether. Ooh, I think I got one. Yes, got a gas tier. All right, back to the overworld. Because I only need three. Well, this place has gotten pretty popular. Boom, two emeralds. That's another thing I'm going to need. Wow, look how many iron golems are hanging out around here. Lots of people. All right, guys, it's kind of nice that I already have a, a project table here because I want to make something pretty neat. Uh, I'm going to get about a stack of these glass panes. That should be enough. I do need a bit of glass for the build I'm about to do, but uh, I want to show you guys this recipe here, and I want to actually make a plan out of it because it's something we're going to need a lot of. Uh, we need the gold, we need the glass, but the most important thing we need is some royal jelly. Uh, that stuff is uh, what I was pretty much working on the bees mostly for. Uh, it's pretty much the main component of bees uh, that's used for the genetic engineering stuff. And this gets you some empty serum vials. And we're going to need a good amount of these. You can see I already grabbed about 20. Uh, we're going to need some more. But for now, this is some pretty good stuff. Uh, I want to uh, go ahead and just run one, two, three, four, five. I'll just clear out this whole line here. And we're going to build the, uh, the, the line of uh, stuff that we're going to need here. Now, I'm going to try and map it out in a somewhat intelligible way. So let's see. Uh, the first machine that I'm going to need, let me map out exactly what I need here. Let's see. I think I might maybe want to move my acclimatizer. Not really sure, but let's do this in a somewhat intelligible way. So the first block I want to make is the isolator. This is an important block. It's pretty much the, well, they're all very important. You can't really do much of anything without any of these blocks. You need all of them, really. Um, but we're going to need some blaze rods, which you can see I pretty much brought everything with me. I'm sure I forgot one item somewhere because that's just the way Dyer rolls, but isolator. All right, so this is an important block. You can see here uh, that it's got Left side is your input, and right side is your output. And what you're going to want to put in your isolator is some empty serum vials. We're also going to need to hook this guy up to some power. So, uh, yeah, remember how I said I'd forget something? How about power combos? This is why I have portal gun, so I don't have to run back and forth so much when I forget things, which is inevitable. Now, this block is not the most expensive block in uh, this mod, but you can see it quickly charging up here. It requires 50 Minecraft jewels per tick to run. That's a lot. Like, that's more than a quarry. I think that's more than a quarry at max speed. This is a very expensive block to run. All the extra bees blocks are very expensive from a power perspective. You need lots of Minecraft jewels, which is why I spent so much time working on my boilers and making sure I have lots of power production and making sure I have lots of, um, you know, stored energy here. So you can see this thing quickly draining out uh, and it's filling the internal buffer. So the isolator now uh, is uh, pretty much full. The isolator will, when it's connected to power, slowly draw. It won't draw 50 per tick, but it will draw just a bit um, you know just to keep it running at all times so the isolator is an important one I'm gonna show you what each of these do in turn but uh, first I'm gonna uh, make out another one of these how about uh, I could go with the replicator yeah I think that sounds good uh, I'm gonna go um, synthesizer I think that sounds like a good one so soul sand I'm gonna need two of the uh, vanilla build craft tanks they're gonna go on the side with the glass on the top another piece of redstone Advanced Genetic and Soul Sand. Okay, Synthesizer, important block. I think I'm gonna put him uh, right here next to this one. Boom. All right, this guy requires another 50 Minecraft jewels per tick. So again, crazy expensive blocks, like, whoa. Uh, nothing really compares to the power requirements for the synthesizer and for the uh, isolator outside of the extra bees mod. Um, so now let's go ahead and talk about the purifier. 
because that is even more expensive from a uh, MJ perspective. So let's get ourselves four build craft tanks. And we need purifier. So those are the three gas tiers. Okay, no biggie. Again, a little bit of redstone on the bottom just to make sure the block can connect to a redstone signal, I guess. And some gas tiers. Gets us the purifier. This guy, you ready? Hold on to your hats. This guy requires 100 Minecraft jewels per tick to run at full speed. 100 Minecraft jewels. That's crazy. That's a huge amount of power. I don't know much of anything that comes close to that uh, that I can even think of. Like, you could probably run two quarries and still have more power than, uh, you know, the purifier here. So this thing's crazy. Uh, so these different blocks all do different things. I might be looking at these interfaces and saying, like, this is really confusing to me. Don't worry, it's not so bad, I promise. Like, it, it'll be fine. Um, though I am occurring to me a little bit here that I might need to fix something a little somehow. Yeah, something didn't occur to me. Hmm. Yeah, we might not be able to put these blocks here. Might need to move them down a bit. Give me just a moment. No, I think we're going to be okay. We'll see. Uh, we'll leave it as is, and maybe it'll just be a fun build. All right, so next up after that, we're going to need a replicator. So let me make that real quick. This block is the one that I said wasn't quite so important, but I was making anyway. Uh, this guy requires 50. Connecting up the power line there. And then uh, finally, the last block here is uh, the synthesis. No, it's the uh, inoculator, that guy. There he is, the inoculator. Uh, not terribly bad. This guy requires only 25 Minecraft tools, the cheapest of the machines. OK, so plenty of power input. Good to go. Now these all might look really confusing and scary, but don't worry, I uh, laid them out in a somewhat intelligible manner, I think. So hopefully, they should not make too much confusion for you. Now, the three blocks that I placed in front of the iron tanks here are the ones that require, uh, you can see they all have internal tanks here. Cool. Uh, actually, the replicator doesn't. I wasn't sure if it did or not. Okay, that's fine. Uh, no biggie. And the inoculator doesn't, and the isolator doesn't. So really, uh, I want to go get a valve connection here, um, debating if I want to move these two to the side here, because I don't know if I want it falling in the front. So let's maybe do that. I'll be right back. I need some, uh, well, I can go get it real quick. I need some uh, conduit, uh, this stuff, liquidux, and I need um, from Railcraft a valve. Cool. So let's say we wanted to do this. I should probably sleep through the night here if I was being smart, huh? Probably. So I think what I'll do is break the uh, iron tank valve here. And remember, like I've told you many a time, it's the middle block in the center that actually stores all the data here. So there's no chance of losing it unless you break that middle center block. So open this back up, see, look, all the liquid DNA is still there, nothing to worry about. I'm actually going to run this guy down uh, straight over here. So I need to move this. And I'm going to set up my synthesizer and purifier. Uh, I'm going to put them in this order. So I'm going to put synthesizer here and purifier here. Okay. And then we can run that power line. And the reason for that is we actually need to uh, inject, and you can see that right now they're empty, we have to put liquid DNA in these guys. These are the machines that are going to use all this liquid DNA that we've been setting up. So let's get ourselves a lever and uh, a wrench and set this thing to... Let me out of here. There we go. Excellent. So they'll fill up the internal buffer of liquid DNA, and they're going to use that liquid DNA for some pretty important stuff. So now let's talk about how we're going to use all these machines. So I've placed my inoculator back down. Uh, I placed a piece of cobble here. I will put a machine here eventually, but I'm just holding off for now.
So I've got empty serum vials, and I'm just going to cover the first of these machines for now, uh, and I'm going to give that to you guys as a little bit of food for thought uh, between this episode and next. So let's take a look at a bee. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my bealizer, and I'm going to go grab a bee over here. Let's say I'm going to grab some cultivated drones, okay? Now because they're stacking, uh, we know that they all have the exact same traits. Now let's look at some of the traits that they have. One of the traits is their species. Uh, one of their traits is their lifespan, how long they live inside of a block. Another trait is the speed in terms of like how fast they produce items. So a fast uh, speeded bee, so this cultivated drone is a fast worker, means it produces items a lot quicker than a slower worker would. Pollination, uh, regards to the um, you know pollination of trees nearby, what type of flowers are required, so you can see like some of them had like cactus and jungle vines and stuff like that in the past. Uh, how many bees they leave behind, is there fertility, uh, and there's some effects that some bees have. Um, so, and then over here we can see some other traits like whether or not they're nocturnal, if the flyer is if they cannot survive in the rain, like if they uh, you know keep producing while it's raining out. So um, you know different traits have different abilities. Now um, what we can can do is bring this bee over to our isolator and we can go ahead and put some empty serum vials on the right and put the bee in the input slots on the left and the next available bee will instantly drop into this slot. The isolator is going to isolate one of these genes. It's going to be somewhat random. So it's going to randomly choose a gene uh, from the bee and isolate it and store it in that serum vial. So that's going to be pretty important. So let's see what happens. Uh, it should use up one of the serum vials and boom, we got the flowers pollination serum, okay? So what this serum does is it makes it so that the bee um, uh, that it injects with can uh, pollinate using flowers as opposed to something else. So for example, uh, we know that the tropical drone doesn't use flowers. It uses the jungle pollination, which is uh, these, uh, you know, things right here, the vines, right? So if we were to inject this tropical drone with the flowers pollination serum, then the tropical drones would start pollinating using regular old flowers as opposed to vines. Okay. You'll also note that the bee was destroyed in the process of isolating it. So I'm going to put um, just a couple more cultivated drones in here. Now the bee destruction chance is not 100%. I want to say it's something like 80. So it's a pretty high chance that the bee is going to be destroyed. So make sure you have extras of your bees before you go ahead and throw them in the isolator and start isolating their genes. What you've seen me do is set up a system that automatically gets me lots of extra drones. That's probably a good idea. You know, if you just got the perfect bee and you're really happy with the way he works out, don't throw him in the isolator because you'll lose the drone and you'll have to do all the work to get back to that trait, to that species. What you want to do is make sure you have a bunch of extra drones and then start isolating and then you're in good shape. So we got another flowers pollination serum. Well that's kind of junky luck, right, of all the different species and stuff. So here we got a cultivated species serum. So if this guy was used on a bee, so for example, if I went and grabbed the forest drone and injected the forest drone with a cultivated species serum, it would become a cultivated bee. How cool is that? That is exactly what we're talking about. So we can use these um, these different genes. So here we go, high fertility serum. That's a good one. That's the one that makes it so that there's always three offspring. That's a good trait to use when you're uh, trying to breed your bees because remember it's the offspring that determine like you know is the random chance so the more offspring you have the better chance for a good offspring drone so if you're really working hard on trading your bees up to like you know a good species or whatever that might not be a bad idea so we got another high fertility serum now the thing about these serums is you don't need more than one Take my word for it, we'll get into why in just a bit. So why don't I show you guys a good way to deal with it. Now, I don't really need the acclimatizer anymore, so I'm gonna get rid of that guy. I'm gonna go build something and I'll be right back. And then we gotta wrap up the episode because we are getting close. All right guys, so what am I gonna get um, to deal with the fact that we've got all these extra uh, traits coming out? Well, I'm gonna build myself a powered furnace. Uh, basically any furnace, if you smelt your um, bee um, traits from the uh, Power pollination serum. So for example, I've got two flowers pollination serum. Like I told you, I really only need one. So let's go ahead and smelt one. And what it'll do is it'll give you back an empty, um, you know, serum vial, which is cool. And uh, I actually want to take this off because that probably went into, well, it probably went right back into here. So that was nice. That's actually not a terribly bad thing at all. Let's actually keep that that way. Cool. Yeah, that works. 
So, uh, yeah, we can see here we're, uh, you know, chopping down some bees. Now, we didn't put six bees in there, so you can see we definitely had some luck with them not being completely destroyed. Let's see what other uh, serums we got. Effect cancellation. That's a good one. Remember the jungle bees poison me? Well, if I inject the jungle bees with effect cancellation, they won't have the poison effect anymore. So that's a nice one to have. High fertility we've got. Cultivated species. Flowers pollination. High fertility. Flowers pollination. Effect cancellation. So we're duplicating a lot here. It's a random chance, right? So we got to keep processes down the bees to get to the one we want. What I'm actually looking for is that um, high productivity, that um, fast worker. Yeah, that one. That's the one I'm kind of looking for because I know cultivated drones are typically pretty fast workers. So if we, uh, you know, keep chewing them down, we should eventually get that trait fast productivity. Hey, just speaking of the devil, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and get myself a chest to store some of these important uh, traits in. I'm actually going to get two chests. Um, I want to have one be, uh, and I'm, I'm thinking probably put them over here. So maybe I want to go upgrade them to iron chests real quick. And then, like I said, we really got to wrap up. Like, we're right there, guys. So let's do this real fast. And then uh, coming back next episode, I'll show you what to do with these serums so you can use them. Because right now, they're perfectly worthless. So I need to show you guys how to use your serum vials. And, uh, you know, we're going to start modifying some of the traits of our bees. So let's put down two chests here. Uh, one chest is going to store uh, flowers, effect cancellation, high fertility. This is a duplicate, so I'm going to go burn this up. So if we, uh, you know, check here, we can see that we're out. I just want to make sure that this does flow in properly. So burning high fertility, and it should land right in here in a second. There we go. That's kind of cool. That was by mistake. Uh, the other um, chest here is where I want to store my uh, species serums. So just me personally, I like to keep them separate. So I have one that has all the traits for the bees. So flowers, effect cancellation, high fertility, high fertility productivity an important one so like for example right now my um you know cultivated queens are high productivity but my imperials aren't so maybe i want to put that trade on there and they'll start producing more especially my industrious because you know you can see the right here like they've both had the same number of frames but we're not producing nearly as much pollen as we were royal jelly so by putting the fast productivity on there we'll get more pollen uh than uh you know before so that's going to be an important one to put on. So a couple more machines to cover, uh, show you guys how all the extra bees genetic manipulation stuff works. But once we get it going, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to let my, um, you know, bees run. I'm going to let my cultivated bees run. There's uh, some other types of bees that I don't have right now. I don't have any of the world gen uh, extra bees uh, bees specifically there's like marbled and there's rocky bees the reason for that is um, they're spawned in caves and we didn't have extra bees installed when I created this world so I'm gonna have to create a miscraft age and start mining out there to try and find some of those bees but they have some really good traits so trust me when I say we want to track them down but with that I'm sorry to say we definitely have to wrap up way past that wrapping up point but you know I was having too much fun uh, you know cooking down my bees into some cool stuff so you can see we got a bunch of other traits i'm gonna gonna go through here and uh filter them out make sure i just have one of each so i'll be back next episode like i said to show you guys how to use these serums and then i'm gonna show you guys um you know some other cool stuff and we definitely have to get to automated mining because uh you know quarries are fun but i have a cool idea that i think is going to be way faster and a lot of fun to build so all right guys take it easy